Most Reverend Archbishop Leopold Cherelli, the Papal Nuncio to India and to Nepal, His Grace Archbishop Elias Gonzalez, the Archbishop of Nagpur, Reverend Father Aquin Norona, the Rector of St. Charles Seminary, Nagpur, Reverend Father Anthony de Souza, the Vicar General, my dear fathers, sisters, and brothers. A hearty welcome and once again a very good morning to you all. Today we have gathered here to bless the renovated cemetery, its chapel and the niches. In order to inaugurate and officiate this rite of blessing, we have with us in our midst the Apostolic Nuncio, His Excellency Most Reverend Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli. We extend a warm welcome to His Excellency, hearty welcome to His Grace Archbishop Elias Gonzalez and Vicar General Reverend Father Anthony de Souza. Now I earnestly request the Nuncio His, His Excellency to cut the ribbon and officially inaugurate and bless the renovated chapel and cemetery.
Thank you, Your Excellency. Now I welcome the brothers to lead us into the renovated chapel in procession with tribal dance for the blessing of the chapel and niches. <laughs> Brother Rajesh Chukka, a first year theology, <coughs> present a brief history of the significance of this cemetery. Brief history of the Seminary Hills Cemetery. A Catholic cemetery is more than a place for the burial of the dead. It represents continuation, even in death and spiritual alliance. <coughs> Which, which makes, makes all Catholic members, members of one great family. It bears silent witness to the final resurrection and our faith, which eloquently tells us that life, while change does not end here on earth, we can trace the beginnings of what is now called the Seminary Hill Cemetery to the earliest the case in the history of the Archdiocese of Nagpur. Around the year 1900, the Archdiocese of Nagpur got many acres of leased land, now so, from the then British government for a nominal sum of money. The chief purpose of this scene was to establish a bishop school on the seminary hills. Later on, some more acres of land were bought by the archdiocese on the seminary hills of Nagpur. Accordingly, the red building was built and it was a seminary for a long time till the Second World War. During the war, the government took all the building and returned it to the diocese after the war. The red building then became the SS College. And St. Charles Seminary was built in its present place in 1956. Since there was only one common cemetery in Nagpur for both Catholics, and Protestants opposite the Ayurveda civilized, the then British Char, the Bishop Charles Palavet, MSFS, earmarked a portion of land on the hills as a burial ground solely for bishops, priests, and religious sisters. This came to be called the Seminary Hills Cemetery. A cemetery is called a, not a cemetery because of its concentration, but because it holds the relics of many saintly men and women who offer their life for the sake of the gospel. This cemetery is blessed with the burial of many French bishops, priests, and religious sisters who belong to different congregations. <coughs> bishop Alexis Ricard, the first bishop of Nagpur from July 1887 to November 1892, was buried here. 
It was he, bless the Guru of Our Lady of Luz, on 8th September 1892, at the present St. Charles Seminary. He was followed by Bishop Charles Felix Pelvet as the second bishop of Nagpur from November 1893 to July 1900, was also buried in his holy place. It was he who played the major role in establishing Chesa Seminary on Seminary Hills from 1896 onwards. He was followed by Bishop John May <coughs> and the third bishop of Nagpur who served the diocese from November 1900 to 1903 and he was also buried in his cemetery. The opening of St. Charles Seminary and acquiring a printing press were important events during his administration. As you can see, this cemetery is also a resting, a resting place of numerous fathers, brothers and sisters who have gone before us, who tirelessly proclaim the gospel through their words and deeds. Today, we gratefully acknowledge and remember the, self, the selfless and generous sacrifice and service to the Archdiocese of Nagpur. Dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here this morning to witness the blessing of the Revelation Chapel and the newly constructed niches on the walls of the cemetery under the guidance of the Lordship of our beloved Archbishop Alex Gonzalez, and we are extremely honored to have with us His Excellency Archbishop Leopold Girelli, the Apostolic Nuncio to India, to bless and preside over this occasion. Let us all participate in this sacred rite with prayerful hearts. Now I request the Lord's Lord's Excellency to unveil the Yekekara, which is marked the celebration and inauguration of the in Christ, we have gathered here to seek blessings of God upon this land and these renovated structures. Relying in His providence, let's seek His blessings. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. Chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. <coughs> Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray in the words of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, glory be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, who calls us to pray, who meets us in prayer, we come together as your body, the Church, to dedicate this cemetery chapel for your glory. We ask you to bless this chapel, a place dedicated to your service. Send your Holy Spirit and fill his room with your presence and power. May all who come here find comfort and solace for their souls. May they know their prayers are heard and answered. May their faith be strengthened, their love refreshed, and their hope encouraged. May the experience of prayer which they have in this place enable them to be disciples, that they might follow you in the way that leads to eternal life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons of
of Tony and Theology, and I will be your host for this wonderful event today. As a traditional practice, may I now invite our dignitaries, His Excellency Archbishop Leopold Jeremy, to illumine and inaugurate this beautiful event. Along with His Excellency, I would like to invite His Grace Elias Gonzalez, the Archbishop of Nagpur, Reverend Farad Kuhinoron, the Rector of St. Charles Seminary, the Vicar General, Reverend Father Anthony Nisuda, and Sister George Natos, to light the lamp. When 
that Jesus made is claimed to be the light of the world, scribes and Pharisees reacted with hostility. That claim would sound even more astonishing to them than it was. To them it would sound like a claim, as indeed it was, to be the Messiah and even more to do the work that only God could do. The word light was especially associated in Jewish thought and language with God. In Psalm 27 1 we read, The Lord is my light. In Isaiah 60 19 we read, The Lord will be your everlasting light. In the book of Job 29.3 we also read, By his light I walked through darkness. Prophet Mika says, When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. The Jewish spiritual leaders declared that the name of the Messiah was light. When Jesus claimed to be the light of the world, he was making a greatest claim which only he could make. Jesus, the greater living light, has come not simply to guide a particular people who sit in darkness, but for the whole world. This went beyond all orthodox messianic expectations of the day. The scholarly Pharisees had not grasped the mighty vision of the prophets that the Messiah would come as a light to the Gentiles as well as to their own people. And all those who followed him, including the first disciples who had come to see him and now walked with him, would know the very character and glory of God through Jesus the light. They would no longer be in darkness, for they have the gift of light and light in them. Jesus is the living light of God which has come among us and he is the light which gives life to the people. Just as a flower can never blossom when it never sees the sunlight, so our lives can never flower with the grace and beauty they ought to have until they are illuminated with the light of the presence of Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us look at our light Jesus to make us alive just like the warmth of light gives life to the world. Let him enable us to believe in his light and life. Amen. Thank you, dear Father and brothers. It is said that visitors coming to visit our community as a Christ visit to us. Dear friends, we are indeed honored with many dignitaries amidst us. It's a great honor and privilege for us to welcome them. So, to welcome our distinguished guests, may I now invite Reverend Father Kinnarada, the Rector of St. Charles Seminary, on the stage. My dear fathers, sisters, and brothers, good morning to you all and a happy feast of Diwali, the feast of the celebration of lights. It is indeed a great joy to see all of you gathered here this morning in St. Charles Seminary Auditorium to take part in the Diwali celebration.
and thank God for all His blessings showered upon us during these days of our spiritual journey of faith. On this auspicious occasion, we are delighted indeed to have in our midst the papal nuncio, His Excellency Leopold Jerel. As we know, a papal nuncio, officially known as an apostolic nuncio, is a diplomat of the Holy See to a state or an international organization having the rank of an ambassador, usually with the ecclesiastical rank of a tutelar archbishop. Apostolic Nuncio also serves as a liaison between the Holy See and the Roman Catholic diocese in the nations or regions to which he is assigned. On behalf of St. Charles Seminary, fathers, sisters and brothers and all of you my friends, I am privileged to extend His Excellency Leopold Jirelli a heartfelt cordial welcome on this most special occasion of his visit to Seminary Hills to bless the renovated chapel and graveyard as well as to address us and join in the celebration of Diwali. Dear Excellency, a warm welcome to you. I express my heartfelt welcome to His Grace, Most Reverend Elias Gonzalez, the Archbishop of Nagpur and the Patron of St. Charles Seminary to grace this occasion and for his constant guidance. Welcome, dear Bishop. I am delighted to see the Vice Rector, Rectors of Study Houses, all the superiors of religious congregations, sisters, fathers and brothers, and all of you, my dear friends, for your active participation in the Diwali celebration and joining us in the program. A warm welcome to you and one and all, and may God well, our Father Rector has welcomed all of us. Now, on behalf of all of us gathered here, I extend a warm welcome to you, Reverend Father Rector, and for this I request Father Joshua to welcome him with a bouquet of flowers. Thank you, dear fathers, for the the honor. Now is the most awaited time to listen to our chief guest of the day, His Excellency Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli. Your Grace, Most Reverend Elias Gonzalez, Archbishop of Nagpur, and uh, your father, Aquino Noronia, Rector of the Rich Seminary, Reverend Father John Paul, Vice Rector of the Seminary. Of you, Reverend Father, sisters, and brothers and seminarians in our Lord Jesus Christ. I am truly glad to be present in the St. Charles Diocesan Seminary and meet the religious men and women here present and the seminarians of the Archdiocese of Nagpur on the occasion of my pastoral visit to the Archdiocese. This seminary, as has been said, was established in 1851 and from the year 1959 it has been under the care of the Dominican Fathers. From this same year, 1959, the seminary has given about 1,300 priests and 18 bishops and the motto of the seminary is to form missionary priests for North India for this academic year 2022-2023 the seminary has 164 seminarians and 92 non-resident students 
from many institutes of consecrated life, studying philosophy and theology. On the staff there are 11 resident professors, so the formation program that has been des designed helps the seminarians in their all-around development. The social postulates that have been organized, such as programs from the poor, from Islam uplifted, and conduct, conducting educational classes for poor children, are valuable opportunities provided for the pastoral growth of the seminarians. So I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to the rector and the staff and students for your dedication and commitment in the vineyard of the law. My dear rector and seminary formators and new seminarians, you must receive a solid and well-rounded preparation in the seminary. The formative years include human, spiritual, intellectual, cultural and pastoral dimensions. The first priority for seminaries today is, is their life of prayer and learning the law the word of God in all its purity and integrity. The seminary years are a time for the seminarians to discover Christ. It is only when you seminarians you have a personal experience of Christ that you can truly understand the Lord's will and consequently your own vocation. In this regard, the seminarians can learn more from your own lives, lives of you, Rector, and all the formators in charge of the formation. So, my dear seminarians, in God's mysterious plan, you have been called by Christ to announce the good news. In you, there is a great promise for the future of evangelization. It is my hope that during your years in the seminary, you will develop an ever greater hunger for the Word of God. Hence, this precious time of seminary formation is given to you so that a strong formation, a strong foundation may be laid for the task that awaits you as priests. You must conscientiously prepare yourself for the ministry of service. I want to stress and underline this word, uh, ministry of service. We are called to serve the, the people, not to rule the people. When you will become priest, parish priest, or in charge of communities, remember that you are at their service, even as leaders. So, the ministry of service, by based on the word of God, always keeping Jesus before your eyes. As St. Ambrose said, Christ is everything for us. I see there are also many women, religious women here, and also some men, religious men. You are present here today in large numbers to attend this meeting. I express my gratitude to you for your consecration. 
your apostolic activity and for your profession of the evangelical councils, obedience, poverty, and chastity, which are a particular testimony of love. Pope Francis gave a call to men and women religious, saying, I am counting on you to wake up the world. This is the priority that is needed right now to be prophets who witness to how Jesus lived on this earth. Look to the future, said the Pope, where the Spirit is sending you in order to do even, even greater things. And the Holy Father explain that consecrated men and women are also called to true synergy with all other vocations in the church, beginning with priests, the diocesan priests, and lay faithful in order to spread the spirituality of communion. May the Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, be for you seminarians the model to become the priest, the shepherd of the future, and inspire you to work together in this year of commission. And may the Blessed Virgin Mary intercede and protect the St. Charles Seminary and accompany, accompany you to carry out your mission in this world. Thank you. Dear members of St. Charles Major Seminary, highly appreciate your gracious presence amidst us, and we take this opportunity to express our love and gratitude. As a token of our love, may I now request Reverend Father Pinona, the Rector of St. Charles Seminary, to come over to felicitate His Excellency Archbishop Leopold Jeremy. On behalf of the St. Charles Seminary, I extend my deepest sentiments of gratitude to His Excellency, Most Reverend Leopoldo Cirelli, the Papal Nuncio to India and Nepal, who spent his valuable time with us despite his busy schedule to grace the occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage us and inspire us in our journey ahead. Thank you, dear Archbishop. I am also immensely thankful to the patron of our seminary, Most Reverend Elias Gonzalez, the Archbishop of Nagpur. Words are not enough to thank His Grace for His constant guidance and support to us. 
Thank you, dear Grace. I would also like to thank Father Akbil Narana, the rector, Father John Paul, the vice rector, and all the staff members of their support and encouragement. Thank you, dear fathers. I am very thankful to all the rectors of various study houses, fathers, superiors of different communities, sisters and brothers for your valuable presence. Thank you, dear fathers, sisters and brothers. I also thank Reverend Father Sijo, the book creator, and Father Peter Thomas for helping us to organize the event. Thanks to Sister Danny and Kitchen Department for organizing the Diwali Suites. Thanks to Father Joshua and Father Saju for organizing the program both at the cemetery and in the auditorium. Thanks to Father Ivan Rodriguez for providing us the beautiful umbrellas and for sending their children to welcome His Excellency. Thank you, dear fathers and sisters. A special word of gratitude to the candidates from St. Joseph's Congregation for making this event a colorful one with your graceful prayer lines under the direction of Sister Jaya. And I'm also thank, thank the Rosary Parish children who have played an important role in welcoming His Excellency. Thank you, dear sisters and children. I am immensely, immensely thankful to Brother Pimento and Brother Sunil Beck for energetically anchoring today's program and also Brother Rajesh Chukka for presenting the history of the cemetery. Thank you, dear brothers. I would also like to thank the people who worked behind the scene to make this event happen. Especially, I sincerely thank all the brothers of St. Charles Seminary for their selfless and generous service in their respective departments. Thank you, all our dear brothers. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for making this event a successful one. Thank you, Dickie Brian, for your words of gratitude. 24th of October 2022 has become yet another historical day in the life of St. Charles Seminary with the visit of His Excellency Archbishop Leopold Chiran. I once again thank all of you for being a part of this historical day and wish you all a wonderful day.